Take a look at this particular region of Africa. Do you have any idea what's there? Well, nothing, to be precise. At least for now. However, this place may go down in history shortly, and you'll soon understand why. You see, the map you have just been looking at belongs to Africa's giant, the Democratic Republic of the Congo. This second largest country in Africa and the seventh worldwide plans to make something that Europe and America have never managed to build. It is more than decided that the biggest dam of all time will be built just here in the realm of equatorial rainforests. If this brave idea comes to life, we might all see the rise of a new era for the whole continent of Africa. So, a few quick questions. How exactly do they want to do it as one of the poorest countries in the world? And two, why is this project so important, but yet so uncertain? Allow me to tell you all of this and much more, how today the DRC's government is chasing tomorrow's dream. Before we get really serious, allow me to tell you a short history behind the idea of the project. Let's go back to 1950. Back in the day, the DRC was influenced by the Belgians, as the DRC was one of their colonies. 50 kilometers upstream of the mouth of the Congo River and 220 kilometers southwest of today's capital, Kinshasa, there is a place where nature meets paradise. A 15 kilometer stretch of water that has a drop of 100 meters. Let me introduce you to Inga Falls. Just look at these clips from the Congo River. Now you understand why some call them the world's largest waterfalls. Let me tell you that these wonders are powered by the Congo River stream, and that contributes to the second largest water flow. About 42,000 cubic meters are released into the ocean every second. So far, the first place remains with the Amazon. But let's get back to the history. So, the smart Belgians knew about this enormous hydropower potential and decided to take action. Just when the plans for the Inga project were ready, the DRC gained independence in 1960. Yes, that resulted in shutting down this undertaking, but only for a few years, as it appeared shortly after. Here we are, five years later, with a new government, and the Inga project is already revived. Another four? It was enough to build a six-turbine dam and power 351 megawatts which, obviously, is nothing to compare with the future plans for this massive project, as you'll see in a moment. Finally, after Inga 1 and Inga 2, which happened 10 years later just one kilometer away, everyone realized how much more hydropower lies in the Congo River. And ever since the dream idea of building the greatest dam that would be double the capacity of the biggest dam ever constructed, awaits its finalization. Oh right, one more thing. Have you ever heard about China's Three Gorges Dam that we have mentioned? It's the biggest dam ever built up to date. Just look at these clips and imagine that the Grand Inga Dam, which we are talking about in today's video, would be two times more powerful. It is estimated to generate 40 gigawatts. That means it can light up half of Africa. Yes, half of Africa. Now you see what direction we're heading. This opportunity is one in a lifetime for a continent such as Africa. Look, with this amount of electricity, the DRC's economy and its neighbors can finally take off, leading to the rapid growth of a whole continent. A huge energy gap and poverty problems might be finally over. Also, it will bring the DRC a new life. You'll be shocked when I tell you that only 9% of citizens have access to electricity at the moment. After constructing the hydroelectric power plant, everything will change. Sounds like a fairy tale, right? But now let's get real. For all of you who came here to watch our video, we'll finally cover the real topic of today's video. So how does the DRC government want to finance this sick mega project, which was initially said to be $80 billion? However, people predict it may even be double, as the budget doesn't include transmission lines to carry power across Africa, and who knows, maybe even to Europe. Those lines are far from being ready. In fact, they're not even there yet. As we said, the DRC is considered to be one of the poorest countries in the world. Certainly, they cannot afford this crazy amount of money. 
However, the fact that the Grand Inga Mega Project is a decisive move towards a better Africa, popularity, and utility wins. Numerous development organizations prioritize this undertaking. Also, foreign investors see a huge opportunity to get rich. But the question remains, is it enough? And here we meet trouble. The main financiers for Grand Inga are the World Bank, the African Development Bank, and the European Investment Bank. You probably think that these are enough to support the mega project, and that's true. However, the problem is that they may not want to pay for it, and here's why. You see, the World Bank agreed to help finance Inga 3 in 2014, which would be the first of the six phases included in Grand Inga's plans. However, they backed out two years later. Guess why? The DRC struggles with a legacy of entrenched corruption. Simply, they are scared that the government will siphon the money, as they have done in the past, although they are considering rejoining the project. Nothing is sure for now, and Congo has had to look for loans from private companies. But this is not the only problem. As we get deeper, we encounter more controversy. Let me explain. Doubt from the biggest bank comes from huge environmental concerns as well. The Congo River empties water and sediment into the Atlantic Ocean, creating the Congo Plume, a natural process that is thought to be one of the largest carbon sinks in the world, and plays a globally important role in the ocean's carbon cycle. The vast flow of the Congo River delivers various nutrients and sediments far offshore, where it is consumed by small sea life such as phytoplankton. These microorganisms fix carbon by taking it out of the atmosphere. The organisms eventually sink, taking the carbon with them to the deep sea floor. So now listen. Imagine that Grand Inga Dam can divert two-thirds of the whole Congo's flow. This environmental burden not only messes up the natural process of carbon sinking and emits greenhouse gases, but is a real threat to biodiversity it would force a shift in the dominant species. Lastly, building the reservoir linked with the dam will cause floods and deforestation in the region. If we sum up all of those, then it's understandable that investors are concerned. Like with any big project, it's all about money, but it should be about the people as well. And here, another dark side of DRC's government emerges. The first phase of the project, Inga III, would mean displacing over 30,000 people. Creating a reservoir in the valley that will lie parallel to the Congo riverbed, known as Bundi Valley, will cause flooding, therefore affecting local agriculture. But the 40 square kilometers needed for the reservoir is nothing compared to the Three Gorges Dam in China. If you recall briefly, you can see that the project caused flooding of 630 square kilometers which is almost 16 more than Inga plans, and displaced 1.3 million people. So if we compare these two, it seems that this shouldn't be a problem. But it is. In the previous Inga projects, the government was supposed to compensate people losing homes. But it didn't. They are now living in Kinshasa camp, without basic services such as adequate water and sanitation. Moreover, back in the day, Previous Inga projects left DRC's people in the financial debt, and $80 billion would equal to even bigger burdens. Of course, there is more than that, but we wanted to show you how complex and complicated it is, and why the Grand Inga project is still uncertain. If we take all of this into account, it appears that the Grand Inga dream may never come true. We all admire the efforts the DRC makes, as they have really strong faith in the project. Nevertheless, the mentioned issues may hinder the plans of the government. With a lack of transparency and omnipresent corruption, it will not come easy. For now, it appears that the most possible scenario is building Inga 3, which is the beginning of the Grand Inga Mega Project. Also proposed, 5 gigawatts would fit better the needs of Congo. Anyway, we all love to hear any news on the Grand Inga any time, so that the world can be proud once again. What do you think about this bold idea? Let us know in the comments. Thank you for watching, and see you in the next video.